Right. Uh, the other time that we met, we, that is on Saturday, we we're looking at the statement of changes in equity. So today we are going to move on to look at the statement of financial position of a um, uh, close cooperation. Right. And as I stated on Saturday, I might have to uh, look at a uh, company. Uh, companies on Saturday. And maybe I, maybe I might have to finish off on this and then look at companies. Finish off on the statement of financial position, then they uh, will go to companies. Right. So the statement of financial position, uh, the way we shall do it, we shall do it through answering a question. Then I'll also be giving you uh, maybe some of the things, explaining some of the things that might be required, which might not be on the question. Right. Uh, the question that I shall use to illustrate the statement of financial position would be question. Question, uh, we'll do question nine, question nine. Right, so we'll be dealing with question nine. Uh, I don't know if we're going to finish. If we don't finish, we'll finish it off on Saturday before we look at companies. Right. Right, our question says, uh, the following information pertains to Stanford and San CC. Uh, on 31 December 2015, the financial year end of the close cooperation. That's 31 December 2015. Now we are told that number A uh, calculate uh, the retained earnings of Stanford and San CC as the 31 December. All right, I think we discussed that uh, in a CC, normally they don't distribute. With all the profits like what happened with them they normally keep some of the profits within the business for future use so those are what we call the retained earnings so the retained earnings they are the, it's normally the retained earnings from the previous year then we add the profit for the year then we subtract any dividends made or transfers to reserves i think we did uh, we did the retained earnings actually in uh, saturday's class so you can refer to saturday's class uh, so in short, they are just saying do that common that column of the um, uh, changes in equity, which deals with retained earnings only. Right. So to calculate our retained earnings, uh, we are told that so far. There was retained earnings on 1 January of 75,000. So you can say part A. Calculation of retained earnings. of Stanford CC as at 31 December Right. We'll start with the retained earnings at the beginning of year. All right. At the beginning of the year, the 75,000, which I violated there. All right. Then we know that we add the profit for the year 
then we probably uh, we subtract any transfers to uh, asset replacement reserve and we subtract any distributions of um, uh, distributions to members. All right. Then we have um, distribution to members, 50,000. Right, then they've got um, total comprehensive in, uh, income, but it's before any additional information. But remember, it's before any additional information. So when we look at the additional information, if there are omitted expenses or incomes, or if there were wrong things that were included in the expenses or incomes, or incomes, we have to adjust for those transactions. We have to adjust for any omissions and errors that were made in the profit or loss when they calculated that profit. Right, let's start from number one. Stanford and Sun purchased a land and buildings on 1 July 2015. Quality Bank granted the mortgage to the CC on the same date at an interest rate of 10% per annum payable annually in areas. The loan is secured by the mortgage over land and buildings and is repayable in five equal annual installments starting on 1 July 2016. The interest on the loan was correctly recorded in the accounting records and closed off to the profit or loss account. So the interest was uh, properly taken care of. Right. During the year, the land and buildings were revalued by a spawn appraiser at 800,000. The adjustment must still be recorded, right? If you can check this land here, it was um, 620. So they are saying it's now 800,000. So there is a revaluation. So we can say calculations. We don't need it on the retained earnings. Uh, remember that revaluation is a separate item. But uh, I just want to make sure that we do all our calculations once and for all. Additional information too. So that when you do the statement of financial position, we already have done the uh, calculation. Revaluation. This should be equal to. Eight hundred thousand. Minus six twenty thousand, which is equal to one eighty thousand. So this will be the revaluation surplus, and our land will now be recorded eight hundred thousand, whilst under the equity we also have revaluation of one eighty thousand. Right. Any questions there? It doesn't affect the retained earnings. Right, on 30 September 2015, the members of Stanford and Sun CC decided, decided that for the 2015 financial year, inst interest must, must, must be provided for on the loans from members at a rate of 15% per annum on the opening balances of existing loans, as well as on any additional loans that were received from members during the year. It was a, a further resolved that the interest on these loans be capitalized. That means the interest will be added to the loans. On 1 July 2015, an additional loan of 20,000 was provided by Ara Stanford and recorded. So it means it's included in the loans above in the accounting records of the CC. This was the only additional loan from the members during the year. The interest on these loans must still be accounted for. It must still be accounted for, so we need it. 60% uh, of the loans from members are repayable on 31 December 2016. All <clears throat> right, how they are going to be repaid that would be an issue for the statement of financial position. But first of all, we want the interest, all right? So our interest, interest on loans from members. All right, we have to take it into account because we are told that this interest, the interest on these loans must still be accounted for. That means they've not yet deducted it, all right? If we can check our loans, 
uh, from members on the list here, they um. loans from members here, yeah, 100,000. But of this 100,000, we know that 20,000 was only brought in on 1 July 2015. So it, it will not have a full year's interest. Remember that our year ends on 31 December. So out of that loan of 100,000, we had 20,000, which only came in on 1 July. So we're going to say 100,000 minus 20,000. This will have a full year's interest, which is uh, so this 80,000 will have a full 15% interest. But then the 20,000 will only have interest for six months, considering that it, it was only provided in July. So from July to December, our year end is six months. So the, the 80,000 will have a full year's interest whilst 20,000 will only have six months interest. So what do we get as the interest there? Thirteen thousand five hundred. Thirteen thousand five hundred. Right. Additional information three. Now for the statement of financial position. That means our loans to members will now be will now be hundred thousand plus thirteen thousand five hundred which is equal to 113,500. Why did I add the interest? Because we are told here that the interest on the loans must, a, okay, they said it should be capitalized. There was some way where they say it should be capitalized. Right, interest on the loans should be capitalized. When they say interest on loans is capitalized, that means it's added to the loans. It becomes part of the loan going into next year. Right, then another thing they said 60% of the loans are repayable on 31 December 2016. Remember, our year is ending on 31 December 2015. So that means this portion will be paid, 60% will be paid within a year. So that becomes a current liability. Any amount to be paid within a year is a current liability. So that means the current liability would be equal to 113,500 times 60%. Which is the good one? Sixty-eight thousand one hundred. Sixty-eight thousand one hundred. Right. Then the non-current liability, the remainder.
5,400. What? 5,400. 5? Isn't that too small? 5,400. This is 1,500. I think that becomes, that looks a... Uh, I got 45,400. All right. Right, let's let's go to the next thing. So this thing I, I wanted to separate so that when we do the statement of financial position, we know where these things will be recorded. Right. Then let's go to number four. The investment consists of shares in two who's limited, two is limited, acquired at five rand per share. On 31 December, the shares in two is limited were valued at seven rand per share. This adjustment must still be recorded in the accounting records of the CC, right? Uh, remember that where we record the increase uh, depends on whether the shares are for trading or not. Like in this case, we are not told. So I said, you look at the type of company, the fact that it does not have a PTY, we will take it as for trading. So that means we would include the gain in the calculation of the retained earnings. So they are moving from five to seven. Uh, these are the shares. Right. So there is a gain. Right. Additional information for. Right. The number of shares would be equal to 100,000 divided by 5 which is equal to 20,000 shares. I think you can see here that this value of the shares is 100,000, but we're told that they'd been purchased at five rand each. Right, so the gain, gain on fair valuation, valuation of investments, Our gain would be seven minus five multiplied by twenty thousand. What do we get? Is that 40,000? That should be 40,000. So that means there's a gain of 40,000. Because they've increased from a five rand to seven rand, it's a gain. But if they were not for trading, we're not going to include it in the um, retained earnings. It was going to go to mark to market. Right, so this will give us our retained earnings at the end of year. Right. Then we do Statement of financial position. As at state one December. Right. 
we start with the assets always. And our assets are divided into two categories. We have non-current assets and current assets. So we start with non-current assets. What are non-current assets? Non-current assets refers to all those assets that we expect to use for more than one accounting year. One accounting to one financial period, we used to we expect to use them for more than one year. All right, under a, a non-current assets, we've got property, plants, and equipment. Right, a property, plant, and equipment includes the following. Land and buildings. Land and machinery. Furniture and equipment. Water vehicles. So all these physical non-current assets, as long as we expect them to use them for more than a year, they will be included under pl a property plan and equipment. And we should know that these are included at carrying amounts. Which is cost minus accumulated depreciation. Right, so we're going to include these ones here. Let's remember our land that it was revalued, so we'd use it, it would include it at the new amount. So we'd include this land, but we'd include the 800,000 on additional information too. We'd include machinery, we'd include vehicles, then we subtract the accumulated depreciation and the accumulated depreciation. So always remember to subtract your accumulated depreciation. So we add up the assets it costs, then we uh, have the, our accumulated depreciation. Right, so we're going to have for land and buildings, I will no longer use the uh, 620. I will now be using the 800,000 on additional information too. Plus my machinery, it cost 400,000. Plus the vehicles, it cost 150,000. Minus the accumulated depreciation on machinery, 80,000 minus the accumulated depreciation on vehicles 54000 what do we get Let's be fast. One million two hundred and sixteen thousand. One million two hundred and sixty thousand. No, sixteen. One six. Yes. Thank you. Right, is that confirmed? Please make sure that you are confirming these figures. Not that I doubt, but we are doing the statement of financial position. We need it to balance. Right. A, under the current assets, 
we also include financial assets. In this case, we don't have rights. What are the financial assets that we include? Fixed deposits. mature after a year as long as their maturity date is more than a year away a, then would include them under non-current assets investments in shares that are for trading so if the shares are for trading like those shares in two weeks if it was a PTY or if they said they are for trading, we're going to include them under the non-current assets. Loans to members to be repaid after a year. So if these things were there, we're going to include them under the um, non-current assets as uh, as a financial assets, but we don't have these things in this particular case. So we then add our non-current assets, we get, so there's no need to show the financial assets if it's not there. We don't have to show the zero like what I did. I'm just doing it so that we know the things that we are supposed to include. So if it's not there, you don't include it. All right, current assets, we have inventories. Uh, under inventories, we normally use inventory of goods, consumables on the end, stationary on the end. So if they just say stationary, you don't include it here. But if they say stock of stationary or in, uh, stationary on the end, Packaging material on the end. So uh, these things we only uh, include under inventories if they say on it. If they just say packaging material, that's an expense. If they, they just say stationary, that's an expense. But if they say stock of stationary at year end, stationary or consumables on the end at the year end, then we include them under inventories. Right, in this particular case, we only have one inventory's value, which is this one here, that 50,000. Right, <clears throat> then we have, we have trades and other receivables. Right, under trades and other receivables, We include trade receivables, or data, it's one and the same thing, or account receivable. Then we subtract allowance for credit losses if it's there. Then subtract allowance for settlement discounts granted, if it's there. Then we add accrued income. If on the question paper. Right, in this particular case, we have these data here. And uh, it seems as if we don't have all those other things that I have talked about. We don't have those other things that I've talked about. So it will just be the 64,200. Right, you also include prepaid expenses. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, we don't have uh, prepaid uh, expenses here. 
you can also include VAT receivable. If SARS are owing you your VAT, it would include it. We don't have. We also include income checks receivable. If it's there, of which we don't have. Right. A, a, to check if there is income tax receivable, you look at this SAS. If it's a debit, that means SAS are owing us. So that will be shown under current assets. But if it's a credit, it means we are owing SAS. So that will be a liability. So the fact that here it's a credit, that means we are owing SAS, it's a liability. If SAS were owing us, then it could have been a debit. Then we're going to create an asset. Then. Right. Then the next. We can also have what we don't have here. We can also have other financial assets. Other financial assets are just those financial assets that are included here. But now the, they will be maturing within a year. Other financial assets. So it's just these three things. But the, on the opposite side of uh, the description. That is, we can say for a fixed deposit, it should mature within a year, not after a year. For it to be current asset, it should mature within a year. For an investment in shares, it should be, no, this one I made a mistake, that are not for trading on the non-current. Non-current that are not for trading. Then the current is the one that is for trading. Loans to members for it to be current to be repaid within a year. So these things can either be current or non-current, depending on their nature. Right. We don't have again here. Then we'll have um, cash and cash equivalents. Right. Cash and cash equivalents. We have bank if it's favorable. Petty cash. Cash plot. And cash if they are there. All right. So in this particular case, uh, we have got um, bank, but it's an overdraft. If it's an overdraft, it's a liability. That means we owe the bank. So in this particular case, we don't have cash and cash equivalents. But let me just verify if there's nothing else so that we make sure. So, sorry, other financial assets we have here. Remember, we've got that investment in two heads. This one here. We said that the fact that they didn't, they didn't say that whether it's for trading or not, and the fact that it's not a private company will take it as a, as a one for trading. So now the value was um, 100,000. And there is a gain of uh, which we calculated, there was a gain of um, 40,000. So we take the 100,000 and then we add the 40,000. So there will be 100,000 plus 40,000. What do you get? 140,000. Right. So we'll have our total here. Then we'll have our total assets. We add the non current plus the current. Is 
then we'll have our equity and liabilities. We start with equity. Under equity, we include members' contributions. Right, our members' contributions, we have them here, we add them together. This 270 plus 270. 200,000, sorry, plus 270. So they have 200,000 plus 270,000. We don't have to show them separately. We just add them together. That's for 70,000. Right. Then we have our retained earnings, which we calculated on number A. This one here, which we calculated, we did the calculation of retained earnings. So that would be 422,500. Right. Then we've got revaluation surplus, which we calculated here. If there's an upward revaluation of land and buildings, there will be revaluation surplus. We calculated it here, it's 180,000. That is our equity. The other things that we can have here, we can have asset replacement reserve. If they are keeping a reserve to replace assets in future, we don't have here. We can also have um, mark to market. Mark to market, this is the increase in the value of shares that are for trading. If those shares in two hours while we're for trading, that increase of 40,000 was going to go under mark to market. If the shares are for trading, any increase will go under mark to market. Right, so this is our equity in this particular case. Any questions on the equity? Right. Then we have our liabilities. Our liabilities are divided into two categories. We have what we call non-current liabilities. Non-current liabilities refers to all those liabilities that are to be paid after the more than a year. Right. So we have got long-term borrowings. Right, on long-term borrowings, we normally include the following. Mortgage, bonds, bank loan, long-term loans, loans, to, loans from members. Right, uh, the bottom line for all of these uh, to be included there. Uh, they should be repaid after a year. them to qualify as a uh, as non-current liabilities right so here our long-term borrowings remember on the loans from members we have got lo loans uh, from members it's from not to here We had the non-current was 45,400. Then also, I think I saw a mortgage on the list. This mortgage, 225,000. So we had the loans from members that are to be paid after more than a year. So we'd say 225,000 plus 45,400. What do we get?
What do we get? I'm waiting for you guys. Seventy thousand and four hundred. All right. This is the only item that we have. Right, then we'll have current liabilities. We have trades in other payables. Right, now our trades in other payables. Would include creditors or trade payables and accrued expenses. Right, so here we can have. Creditors and accrued expenses. They will be added together there. So that would be twenty seven fifty plus eleven two fifty. What do we get? What do we get? Thirty two thousand. Hello? Thirty-two thousand. Thank you. Right. Then we also have income received in advance or prepaid income, of which we don't have that in this case. Right. We can also have VAT payable, of which again we don't have that. But we have got income tax payable. Remember, I told you that if this SAS is indicating a credit, that means you are owing SAS 25 to 100. Distribution to members payable. If they were owing for distribution to members, we're going to include it here. But here we are not told uh, whether they are owing. We are just told the distribution, so we assume that they've already paid that distribution to the members. So our assumption is that that distribution has already been paid, since we have not been told anything else to the contract. Right. Then we we'll also have our bank offer draft. I'll bring over draft to this 2000 year. Then we've got a uh, current portion. Of 
of loans from members. Right, we had these loans from members. One eighteen five hundred, which are current. So the current was sixty eight one hundred. Sixty eight one hundred. So we left sixty eight one hundred. Then we add. Then we have our total equity and liabilities. You add your equity, your non-current liabilities and your current liabilities. Right, so we have here. Our equity, non-current liabilities plus our current liabilities. So you can see that the total assets are equal to the equity and liabilities. 1470200, they should always be equal. Our equity should always be equal to the total assets plus the total liabilities. Any questions on the statement of financial position? All right, if we don't have any questions, then we'll meet on uh, Saturday at uh, around 10. I think I will, I, will, I, will, I will confirm the exact time by Friday so that we'll continue and do the, the companies. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you so much and God bless you, Rachel. Thank you.